This morning we're continuing the series that we have been for, for most of the year, and it's the foundation class that many of us heard many, many years ago from Pastor Dad. And we've come to the place where, uh, yes, last week Pastor Rob spoke and started speaking on terms that Christian talks about, or Christian verbiage. And he, he mentioned the thought of grace. And grace certainly mentions God's kindness, but also, even more so, it's God's divine influence upon our heart. God's ability to do that, which on our own, uh, we could not do. This morning, we want to look and another term that we, we talk about often and something that we want to be a part of our lives. And if we mix that uh, topic, which is the fear of the Lord, we, we mix that with grace, and the two of them together are tremendous. Sometimes Terry and I will be uh, trying to get something cleaned up, and maybe it's a spot in the car on the seat or something, and she says, well, let's try this. And he says, well, let's add this to it. And ah, the combination of the two. Well, the combination of God's divine influence upon our heart and the, and the thought of the fear of the Lord are, are really wonderful tools. The, the morning, this morning, we, we sing about one of, in the hymn, we sing about God is good. And grace and the fear of the Lord both express how God is good because there's something we desperately, we, we desperately need. We want to have an accurate understanding of what the fear of the Lord is. It's something that uh, we should embrace. It's something that is good. It's something that we need. And just giving definitions, the Old Testament word means to fear, to revere, to be frightened. The New Testament definition says to frighten, to be alarmed, to be in awe. Well, that, that's a bit scary. But we are to be in awe of God. And it's a very, very healthy thing to even be frightened of God. Not just considering, oh yeah, how many of us have heard the term, oh yes, the man upstairs. It's like, whoa. That's the true and living God. He's not the man upstairs. He's the creator. He's, he's the judge. He's the, the awesome one. Now, these definitions that we share describe uh, the fear of the Lord. They also point to the awesomeness of God, and they put within us an, a healthy, a healthy fear, healthy consideration of who God is, what He can do, and we want to to have a great respect for him. When we highly esteem God, when we place him and his word and his instructions above everything else and, and everyone else, there's good health. There's good strength. We need that. In Proverbs 8, 13, it says, the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and the arrogance and the way of evil and the perverted speech I hate. So really we see two camps there. Those who don't hate evil, those who don't hate pride and arrogance, and, and those who have the fear of the Lord. And as the fear of the Lord grows and develops in our lives, uh, it, it chases out other things. It chases out other things. So this is a definition as well as a picture of the fear in the, of the Lord in action. Hating evil, hating what is wrong, hating what God hates. A correct fear of the Lord gives us a desire to come near to the Lord and not run away from the Lord. When we mention or think about or ponder the thought of the fear of the Lord, it's to bring us to the Lord and not to chase us away. And if the verbiage, the fear of the Lord, sends us away from the Lord, then we're not understanding what the fear of the Lord is. A friend of mine 
has a sign on his garage door, a big, bold sign. It says, beware of dog. He doesn't even have a dog. But it says, beware of dog. So what's his purpose? To chase people away. You know, don't, don't open my garage door because my big, huge dog, which I don't even have, might bite you on the leg. Well, the fear of the Lord is not a sign that says, go away, be gone with you. But the fear of the Lord is, I'm awesome. I'm, I'm full of everything you have need of. Draw near to me. Draw near to me. And one that hates evil, which is the, uh, evil is the opposite of the fear of the Lord, is one that, that is drawing near to God. One that wants God. So the statement, God is to be feared, is not to chase away, but is to invite us to come near. And as we come near, we find out what God is really like. We find out his character. And it's so important we know what God is like. Because if we don't get that right, then everything's upside down. It really is. God is to be feared. He is awesome. But we, we need to understand what he's like. That That's a benefit. That's a blessing. That's not a curse. It's something that we really have need of. And if we don't understand the fear of the Lord, and if we don't understand what God is like, we miss out on so much. We miss out on so much. The, the Psalms say this, I am on your side. Now we can join the statement, I am on your side, with the statement, God is awesome and to be feared. And those two joined together give us such confidence, such hope in him. And in Psalm 19, verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. It's just expressing that the fear of the Lord and the ways of the Lord and the commandments of the Lord they get it right. They get it right. The concept of the fear of the Lord joined with the blessing of keeping his commandments. God's commandments remind me to fear him. And fearing him reminds us to keep his commandments. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14. The end of the matter has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment, and with every secret thing, whether good or evil. How would you like to live your whole life not in the fear of the Lord, and not believing that we need to obey his commandments, and then life stops, and then what's after that? Well, if we didn't fear the Lord, and if we didn't keep his commandments, yikes, what's next is not a pretty thing. But if we keep his commandments, and we honor and respect and have awe for the Lord, then what's next in the life to come is a good thing. It's really a good thing. So we want to embrace the fear of the Lord. Uh, it, it's, it's for our benefit. When we consider fearing God, we realize that God has the final word. He'll bring judgment. Now, judgment isn't just like something against us. Judgment is a decision. Uh, like at a baseball game, strike or foul ball or uh, ball, one of the three. Um, well, that's what judgment is. It's, it's deciding. And, and we need um, to put our trust in the Lord and we need to have a, a healthy fear of the Lord. Having a healthy fear of the Lord turns us away from evil 
and it turns us to God. If, if we fear the Lord, we, we walk differently. Uh, some years ago, Terry and I heard a report that it's illegal to jaywalk. Now, jaywalking is if you're at a corner and you're supposed to go across the street at the corner and then to the other way, and it takes longer than just diagonally going across. Now, I'm not really afraid on some streets just to, uh, to go diagonally across, and there's streets that Terry and I have gone diagonally across, and it's like we won't get hurt, it's okay, who will see, who knows. But in this report it says, police are starting to give tickets for people that jaywalk, that go across. And I thought, well, don't they have anything else better to do? But there's times where I, I stood on the, on the corner, and it's like, it's a lot quicker just to go that way but I don't want a ticket. I, I, I fear the judgment that might happen. I also fear that there might be a car that doesn't see me because where I'm, I'm supposed, not being where I'm supposed to be. So yes, I'll go this way and then I'll go that way and I'll take more time. But it, it's a rule of the land. It's something that, that needs to be done. Now that's just a, a tiny example. But if we magnify that, we realize that the fear of the Lord causes us to walk in what's upright. And when we walk upright and not in the way of evil, there's a good end. There's a good end. There's a tremendous end. The fear of the Lord gives us strong assurance. Proverbs 14, 26 through 27. In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence. And his children will have a refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. That verse summed up is saying, the fear of the Lord is just great. There's no reason not to want it. Uh, there's strong confidence in it. It's a fountain of life. It's a place of refuge. It turns us from the snares of death. How can we speak evil concerning the fear of the Lord? We can't. We want the fear of the Lord. And concerning having a fear of God, it overrules other fears. The fear of God, the healthy, good, wholesome fear of God overrules fears that are sickly, that will bring a strong judgment upon us, that will bring uh, undesired in. Uh, it can be the fear of man. The fear of God ruling in our lives is greater than the fear of man. So we see all the reason why, more, why we want to embrace the fear of God. An example of the fear of God overruling the fear of man is found in Acts 5. In Acts 5, the religious leaders, the same ones uh, that uh, led the path, that promoted Jesus being crucified, were, were in Peter and the disciples' face. Now, what was Peter and the disciples doing? They were preaching Jesus. And the religious leaders said, hey, stop this. You're not to do this. And they continue to do it, and the religious leaders continue to, to lash out against them. And the disciples' answer was, we ought to obey God and not man. Now, man at this time was asking something that was clearly contrary to the purpose, to the will, to the plan of God. Man wasn't just saying, uh, pay your taxes, don't jaywalk, don't speed. Man was giving, because God goes along with those rules, but this was a rule that, that opposed the things of God. And Peter and the disciples said, this isn't an issue because 
we honor, we fear God more than we do man. So we see that the fear of God displaces other fears. When, when we're in the safety, when we're in the fountain of life, when we're in the safe place of fearing God, then, then other fears dis, dissipate. They're gone. Matthew 10, verse 28, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So we know from scriptures, from Hebrews 9, 27, we know from experience, it's appointed unto man to die. We're, we're all going to die. And, and even having the healthy fear of the Lord can free us from the fear of dying someday. And it's going to come upon us. We are going to die. But having a fear of the Lord, having an awe, having a respect, honoring Him uh, keeps us away from other fears. Proverbs 19.23, the fear of the Lord leads to life. And whoever has it rest satisfied and he will not be visited by harm. You know, the thought of resting, that thought of that safe place, that thought of being secure in God. And the fear of the Lord give us, gives us life and life abundant. Life abundant in this life and in the life to, com to come. And Job 28, 28 says this, and he said to man, behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to turn away from evil is understanding. Now, when, when we uh, are living in the fear of the Lord, and when we turn away from evil, we're living an abundant life. We're living a, a good life. It doesn't mean anything's wonderful in our life, but it means there's that abundant living. It means that we're, we're re resting in the Lord, that we're, we're trusting in Him. And throughout Scripture, we see the thought of being in awe, uh, honoring, uh, being afraid of God in a good and healthy way. Now, throughout Scripture, sometimes it's called the fear of the Lord. Other times, it's just shown as a lifestyle. Our lifestyle is to show that we honor and we fear God, that we place Him above other things, that we place Him above other fears, that, that He's our very first uh, desire and longing. Years ago, we, Terry and I were feeding the, the family and the grandchildren were over and the family was over and we had, I think it was green bean casserole, but I don't remember exactly and the food's being passed around, and uh, if you know my wife, she just wants you to enjoy everything she's cooked. And uh, so this green bean casserole gets to one of the, the grandchildren, and they says, uh, Grandma, I don't prefer green beans. And we thought, what a way to say it. Then they say, I hate green beans. This is, I don't prefer green beans. And I don't know, I don't remember, but probably they, they had to have two of them, you know, just to say, okay, I ate them, and I still don't uh, prefer them. They aren't, I'd rather not have them. Well, we don't want to be that way towards the fear of the Lord. I just don't prefer it. I, I'd rather just set it aside. Well, it isn't that way. The thought of not preferring the, the uh, fear of the Lord is like being lukewarm. Not speaking against it, but not speaking for it. Not really being concerned about my future and the future of the lives of others that I affect. We want to have big arms, empty, of the fear of this world, of, of other fears, 
of our own way. We want to empty ourselves of these things so we can fully embrace the fear of the Lord. It's a fountain of life. It's a place of refuge. It's a good thing. Jeremiah 5, 23 through 24. But this people has a stubborn and rebellious heart. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say in their heart, let us fear the Lord our God, who gives us the rain in its season, the autumn rain and the spring rain, and keeps, us, keeps for us the weeks appointed for the harvest. And this, the point we want to bring out here is they're saying, let us fear the Lord. Let's choose that. Let that be what we're, we're asking for. The opposite is to, to turn away. It's a different pathway. It's, it's, in the United States, we're seeing very much uh, two sides to many things. And you know, some are very vehement about one thing and others are very vehement about another. Well, we want to be very vehement about we choose the Lord. We choose to honor, respect, to, to fear Him. Obeying God and fearing the Lord are, are like a working device. It's like a, a wheel going around or gears going around and another gear connected. And w without one, you can't have the other. Deuteronomy 4.10, speaking to the children of Israel, how on the day that you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, the Lord said to me, gather the people to me that I may let them hear my words so that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live on the earth and that they may teach it to their children. That they may learn to fear the Lord. We learn to fear the Lord. We, we learn that his ways are right. We learn that he's awesome, that he's holy, that he's wonderful. Yes, we know that. But that's growing, that's becoming larger and larger in our lives uh, as we mature and grow in the Lord. The, the Lord is to be feared. So we, we see the fear of the Lord is good. We learn the fear of the Lord. We choose the fear of the Lord. We want the fear of the Lord. But we still need to get there. We still need to get there. And God will help us with that. And this is the thought of grace. Jeremiah 32, 39 through 40. I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for their own good and for the good of their children. And I will make with them an everlasting covenant that I will not turn away from doing good to them. And I will put the fear of me in their hearts that they may not turn from me. That's encouraging. Yes, we choose it. Yes, we want it. Yes, we see it's good. But not only that, the, the plate isn't far away. It comes right our way and the, the chef just plops it on our plate. It's just right there for us and we just need to eat of it. Lord, thank you that you can put and you will put the fear of the Lord within us. Now, it says here that the fear of the Lord is, is going to be put within his children that they don't turn away from him. So is the fear of the Lord bad or good? It's good because it keeps us from turning away uh, from him. And that gives us confidence. We learn the fear of the Lord. We choose the fear of the Lord. God puts it in our heart. Uh, we really want that. We want the fear of the Lord. In Exodus 9, we have a continuation of the plagues that Egypt faced. And at this time, that we're, the plague we're looking at was the seventh plague. So they were quite aware that whatever God said was going to happen. It was really going to be clear. It wasn't the first or second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth plague. It was the seventh plague. It was quite clear. 
And, and God, through Moses, said there's going to be a great hailstorm that's going to cover the land of Egypt. And there was even a warning given that if you have cattle or if you have workers, bring them inside because the hail is going to be so great that whatever it falls on is going to die. So bring them inside so there can be safety. And, and God was speaking that to the, the Egyptians. And some responded correctly and some didn't. And let's pick up that story in Exodus 9. And we're going to read 20 through 25. They had just been given the, the instruction that the hail's coming. Get everybody inside. Get your animals inside because it's going to come. It's a sure thing. Exodus 9:20. Then whoever feared the, the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh hurried his slaves and his livestock into the houses. But whoever did not pay attention to the word of the Lord left his slaves and his livestock in the field. That's an amazing statement. Those who feared the Lord ran to safety. Those who feared the Lord believed what God was saying. Those who feared the Lord lived and their stuff lived, their animals lived. Verse 22, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, so that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, on man and beast and every plant of the field in the land of Egypt. Then Moses stretched out his staff towards heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire, ran down to the earth. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. There was hail and fire flashing continually in the midst of, of the hail. Very heavy hail, such had never been seen in all the land of Egypt since the day became, it became a nation. The hail struck down everything that was in the field in all the land of Egypt, both of man and beast. And of hail struck down every plant of the field and broke every tree in the field. It happened just the way God said so. Now, there's two ways we can look at this. We can say, oh, God is fearful and we don't want to, to serve him. We, we're afraid of him. Or we can look at this truthfully and say, God was being extremely merciful there. And that's the truth. He was telling what was going to happen. And he says, run, take cover so it can be safe, so it can be well with you, so that you can rest when the storm's going all around you. Keeping the commands, keeping the word of the Lord, keeping walking in the fear of the Lord, is really walking in mercy. It is walking in mercy. The, the fear of the Lord is a merciful thing because there is a truth that we're all going to answer to God. It's, it's God being merciful to us. It's God being gracious to us. It's God showing us compassion that we might have the fear of the Lord. And in the fear of the Lord is great confidence. There's great security. One who has the fear of the Lord that, that honors the Lord doesn't run away from, from God, but, but they run to God who's beckoning us, come near. I, I want to look after you. I want to take care of you. I want to be all that you have need of. We want to really understand the fear of the Lord. We don't run away from it. We run towards it. We run to God. It's not an expression of God pounding his fist and, and causing us to, to tremble, but, but it's actually, it's how awesome and how mighty he is. And as we embrace the fear of the Lord, we're on his side and he's on our side. And that's what we want and that's what we so desperately need. Amen. Let's stand.
we never want to continue, we continually want to cry out for the fear of the Lord. We continually want to ask God that that might be in the depths of our spirit, that we don't believe a lie. Like my friend who has on his door, beware of the dog, you know, it's to send you away. Well, to be sent away from God, to go the opposite direction, it's a lie. The truth is, let's draw near to God because he's awesome. He's awesome in a way that it covers us and protects us. Such covering in the fear of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we're mindful this morning of your care. We're mindful of you watching over us. Lord, we're mindful that you have the final word and what you say will come to pass. Lord, we want to fear that. We want to fear you. We want to know that in fearing you, there's safety and protection. Lord, you're awesome. And Lord, we open our heart to you. Amen.